It is time for It's Barely New. And the first uh, first thing we got up is actually pretty freaking cool. Uh, it's a new 3D printing method. And, uh, you know, there is a bunch of 3D printing I've seen, but it's kind of rare to show and stuff. But I can honestly say today was the first day I had ever seen this method. Well, I think it's just been invented, hasn't it? Uh, maybe. I mean, I, assume, I would assume that's the case, but a lot of these things you see and they're like, oh, well, we've heard about this or saw this, but I literally had never seen this before. So essentially what's happening is the left side of the screen here, these are carbon fiber sheets, essentially, like a worn, a woven fiber sheet. Mm -hmm. um, and then what's happening is that it's painting on polymer. My understanding is anyway, I just learned about this, but mm -hmm. it's painting on a polymer um, onto the sheets of carbon. Mm -hmm. And then these sheets get stacked. And then they basically go in some cooker oven. Mm -hmm. And it reduces the sheets down into the thing you see on the right here, which is a set of parts created yeah. from this uh, basically meshing of the thermoplastic into the carbon. Mm -hmm. So they sandblast away the paper. And then you get like a finished piece, but like... Like there's no need for supports, right? Because there's the paper is right. the support. You can print essentially arbitrary 3D objects. And then you get basically a carbon composite. It's insane. I mean, I don't think it's cheap, <laughs> but considering right. how carbon material is usually made, I think you could make things from carbon fiber that like, uh, I guess you could use that, what is it called, forged carbon, where they chop the carbon fiber and they mold it. Like, I think you probably, you might get similar results with that, but I don't know. This is I crazy. Think the thing I've, yeah, I think the biggest issues I've seen in the past with, like, anything that's not flat is essentially that you don't have the, the, the chains of the carbon fiber still there. You have chunks. Mm -hmm. Right. The chunks change the rigidity and the, the characteristics of it. But this allows you to maintain, at least in those layers that are inside of this molded thermoplastic, you get right. these like layers of connected carbon. This is bonkers. Somebody says there's a 3D printed quadcopter at the end. Yeah, there is. Yeah, it's a, like a th four minutes in, maybe five minutes in, somewhere in there. You'll four see them hold it up. In. There's a prop. Oh my goodness. So this is not something you're going to be doing at home. These are, you know, big industrial no. machines, but, Correct. uh, this is an exciting, exciting material. Here we go. There's a quadcopter. I'm disappointed to find that it's basically carbon fiber plate. Stop it. It does have an O3. Stop using novel manufacturing methods to reproduce CNC milling a carbon fiber sheet. Y'all, there is no benefit. You could have just done this with a CNC milled carbon fiber sheet, except for the props. That's new. I cr credit for the iFlate motors and the O3 air unit, but those are just carbon fiber. They're not. Okay. There's a slight bend here. <sighs> I wanted it to be so much cooler than that. I'm disappointed. Well, the props are carbon fiber there. So that's that something. is cool. That is cool. Yeah. You're right. All right. I, I think well, it had a lot more potential to do something more interesting. Anyway, that's probably uh, true. Okay. Thank next you up, for, we've got uh, humoring me. <laughs> next up, we have propeller design for VTOL. Uh, we've got, oh, you did the thing again. Okay. Oh, you keep clicking on the story, and I keep thinking that's the last story. Nope, okay. That's the one. There we'll, you go. We'll okay, get great. this yeah. one. All right. Uh, so, yeah, the next thing we have up is a video we wanted to point out from the channel Electric Aviation. And uh, it's kind of a, I would say, a more between like layman's and scientific guy. Like I would consider Rosser like a scientific charts kind of like data guy. Um, and then some people can kind of gloss over stuff. This video like kind of hits the middle of the road for me for for talking about different solutions for EV tolls and how tip speed is affected and things and how you're adding props and like well, the, how the designs of different aircraft and planes come into the EV toll side of things and stuff. So I thought it was uh, worth showing, at least on its barely news. Yeah, a nice little uh, complete guide to props, not just EV toll. I feel like the title lets it down a little bit. It is a generic guide to props and then it talks about EV tolls, but there's a lot of information in here about props, even if you don't really have anything to do with EV tolls, and well worth a look 
for anybody involved uh, in FPV and RC flight. So we want yeah. to pass that along. The link's down below. All right. Yeah. All right. Next up, we've got a video from RC Test Flight, who many people on the channel might be familiar with uh, from different videos he's done with FPV and on his own channel. And uh, you might know he works for Alta, uh, and this is the Alta mm -hmm. X that he has that he's doing some testing on today. Mm -hmm. Free Fly Systems, makers of the Alta. Right. Yeah, he's uh, he's out here testing to see if he can add a wing to his Alta and get more efficiency in testing. And uh, the short version is yes, you can add a wing to an Alta. And uh, yes, he did get an improvement in efficiency. The wing provided some usable lift. However, at certain speeds, things got a little uh, a little precarious. I think we're about to see an example of that now. No, it's okay. Where's it? There it goes. Oh, 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 it's not good. It's not good when a when a, a, a drone with 33 inch propellers is acting like this. <laughs> That's when your balls climb right up into your pelvis and you go, oh, stop, please stop. <laughs> it's not good. <laughs> so it was not. Oh, God. Oh, God. It was not without some uh, issues. But uh, yeah, where's the where's the chart, Blunty? Where does he show? Hang a little on. bit farther, uh, a little bit earlier. There yeah, you here. Oh, a little bit farther. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Um, basically, yeah, the blue is with the wing, the green is with no wing, and he does show that um, at decent speed, so that 10 to 12 meters per second, he does actually get like 24% increased efficiency as far as the wattage goes. Yeah. So uh, probably we're not going to all run out and put wings on our multi rotors, but surprise, surprise. Wings are more efficient than than uh, VTOL props. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Uh, well, next up, we've got a story about how China is training the next generation of carrier pilots, and uh, it's way more low tech than you might think. Yeah, that's true. Uh, low tech, but also high tech. I mean, there's a lot of people who don't even know about FPV. Uh, obviously they're not with us today, uh, but yeah, so China is using, um, DJI systems and head trackers to basically train people what, what it's like to take off in a plane and what awareness you'll have when you look around and, uh, things like that to kind of get them into the idea before they get into a real, uh, cockpit. I guess, I guess this is cool. Uh, I can't decide. I mean, it's cool to see FPV being used for various things. Um, but I'm surprised to see such consumer grade stuff being used to train military. Are these military pilots? Ostensibly, I mean, it does appear that they are. Yeah. Or is this like some, you know, the Naval Aviation the, University the of the PLA Navy? Yeah. Like, I'm surprised they don't have like bigger simulators or I don't know. I don't think that's how we train. I don't know. Anyway, good for good for them. For using FPV. <laughs> All right. We're going to find out that that was a misreported story or something. Uh, uh, what about another use for drones in China? Is this China? Yeah. Um, I'm not sure. But this is uh, a drone doing some work that people don't like to do, which is climbing up the side of buildings to clean them. Mm -hmm. Uh and this drone helps take care of that uh, by doing all that work uh, for the people instead. So yeah, it goes up and sprays uh, instead of the people going up there. And reports are anywhere as 10 times as fast to clean a building because you don't have to oh, have sure. hoists and, and layouts and you know all the kinds of stuff you would need to do. How clean, I wonder how clean it really gets. Like I, when you clean your car, they say you shouldn't clean your car with just a pressure washer because without physical scrubbing, of at least a little bit of scrubbing, you don't get it fully clean. But I guess that's still probably better than many alternatives. You know, it's still like 90% is good with, you know, a, but a lot faster. <laughs> yeah, or maybe it's like a maintenance thing and then you can have every now and then have somebody go scrub, you know, something like sure. that. Sure, sure. Jeff Locke wonders that since the drone is tethered, does that mean you don't need a 107? If you, um, I don't think it's tethered. Is it tethered? Would you need a 107 I mean, it for just, that? 
I mean, if uh, I think if that thing is going to the ground and it's, it can hold the drone down, I think yeah. that that would be the requirement. Is yeah, it can't like unhook. But I think mm. I think yeah, I think that would be tethering. I don't think the control has to be tethered. I think it just has to be tethered so it can't oh, escape. Oh well, I don't think it's going anywhere. Uh, cool yeah. cat thinks that expanding foam lifts the dirt off. Does it though? It's like scrubbing bubbles. Scrubbing. I mean, I mean, yeah. I didn't get to see. I I would have liked to have seen a before and after. I saw it spraying the foam. I didn't see what the building looked like when it was done. So, hmm. I, I call me a skeptic or call me a hater. You know, there's one thing I don't hate though. Do you know what it is, Blunty? Koalas. I love koalas. You're damn right. <laughs> Yeah, we have a story about koalas today, uh, specifically, of course, drones and koalas, uh, because we've got some drone-based koala detection programs being developed uh, in Australia and being used by citizen scientists to go and map areas and uh, find them koalas. Hmm. This is a big deal. I actually had a little live stream rant some time back about the fires in Australia basically threatening the very existence of koalas uh, by killing all the trees that they live in. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, we got yeah. We got to take care of the koalas. Yeah, they're basically taking thermal images and then using artificial intelligence and a koala algorithm to detect koalas based on their thermal signature um, and make hmm. maps of the koala. Yep. This is an example of one of the koalas they found. It is actually a picture of the very koala that they found with the drones. It was in the middle of a meal when they found him. So, you know, if you pardon me. Yeah. Eating them eucalyptus leaves. Um, and we got one more story, a happy story about drones. We always like to share those so people can know that drones are not just spying on you in your backyard and breaking your building windows, but making your life better in some way. Yeah, um, a three-year-old girl has been rescued by drone. Uh, we always like to put this stuff out because, uh, yeah, it's cool to see uh, search and rescue being helped so much by drones. And this was uh, another case of that where they were able to locate um, this girl in a ravine near her house, and it was much easier to do uh, by drone because they found her in the middle of some bushes that they weren't able to easily locate on the ground. Nice. And here's just clip art of a bunch of different drones, none of which are in any way related to the story, I'm guessing. I've seen like three different drones. <laughs> 